Okay, right now we're with Mariko and Jillian Tamaki. And the book is This One Summer. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. This book is wonderful. I grew up going to a special summer place. Um, this book tells a story of just that kind of place. Uh, maybe you could tell me a little bit about, first of all, the, how you guys work together and co-create this, this book. Well, This One Summer is our second book together, uh, and I am a writer and Jillian is an illustrator. Uh, but really it's a collaborative process. It's really about sort of like two people sort of bringing two different pieces of a story together in some ways. Uh, I start off with a script that sort of looks like a theater script, uh, and then I pass it on to Jillian, and uh, then usually we have many conversations mm -hmm. about what the story is about and kind of like feel out and edit things together. And then... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's like, you know, part of the story of the, the summer and the cottage, that's, I'm from Calgary, Alberta, and we don't really do that. You grew up in Toronto where that's much more of a thing that you do. So the story <laughs> and the characters are yours on the, you know, in the inception. And then, um, and then I feel like at the, the foundation, I get to build the house on top of it. Um, and and there, is a, there are elements that are very collaborative and then there are elements that are just very, very solitary. Um, and we sort of come together mostly in the editing process. Um, but, you know, with comics, they're just very, very, you know, labor intensive and demanding. So a lot of it is just uh, sitting alone, doing stuff um, by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So the story is, um, there's some really tough elements in the story. We're talking about a family that's having a lot of difficulties, a, a husband and a wife, and its effect on, the, on their child, and their effect on the memories that this child has of this very special place and how that's being affected. At the same time, she's growing up and she's seeing things for the first time, and uh, sort of her world is being exposed to some very adult feelings for the first time. Yeah. Um, so when you're thinking about that, how does that affect the way you're, you're drawing it and the way you're, you're telling it and, and, and how you're going to present that to your audience? One thing in the book, um, maybe a theme in all of the books that we've done together, is the idea of communication and non-communication and how hard communication can be and, and the power of silence and right. stuff. So I think that uh, the pictures tell another version of the story or an alternate level of the story or it fills in the gaps and and maybe that is where it, some of the difficult themes get really fleshed out and they're more visible almost in the visuals. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is that kind of like, it is a really great way to look at miscommunication, whereas instead of spelling it out, mm -hmm. you can kind of leave those spaces where the reader is in the same position as the character mm -hmm. sometimes where, you know, there's a scene where the parents have this fight and then you're sort of pulling away from the parents and you're sort of pulling away as the sort of little girls pulling away, you know, and the parents are kind of disappearing on the horizon. So I think it's a really great way of evoking the feeling of that kind of dissonance and the feeling of that kind of distance you get without, a, you know, without necessarily having to explain it, which I think is, you know, so much stuff when you're a kid does feel unexplainable and kind of alien. And I think comics are a really great way of sort of showing that as opposed to telling it. I do too. I don't think that there's, well, there's some really wonderful um, panels in here where you get further and further away or you move in closer and, and all of a sudden you're sort of getting an exploded view of something. You're like right on top of it. And those ideas of, um, they provide like a sort of a, a clarity and a focus on an idea uh -huh. that you wouldn't necessarily get as you're reading the words. Yeah. And I don't know how, you, if that just kind of pops in your head naturally as you're thinking about it or if you guys talk that through when you're storyboarding, but to think about, I want to linger on this idea sure. for a little bit. Well, I think I'm very much guided to, when I'm composing these scenes, is to be guided by the emotion and the meaning behind them and also just that especially when you're that age things feel very vivid and huge and but to the outside really just a little kid like walking around like probably looking puzzled half the time but uh, inside there's an interior life in our exterior lives and like the interiors can feel much more rich and so it can be really fun to go inside and outside of like here's what people see but like here's how that feels mm -hmm. so there's been a huge resurgence in graphic novels and comics in general over the years um, and the storytelling style that comes along with that. Um, where did you guys, as you guys are really pushing forth as your second big big book, but wh where did you turn for your inspiration as you were developing your own storytelling styles? 
in terms of storytelling, it seems like such a work in progress. Yeah. I've been completely influenced by working with uh, Marika, who is a, a real writer, uh, quote unquote, who you know got trained to do it. So <laughs> um, I think, left to my own devices, I, I have done more sort of artistic, you know, abstract comics. But it's been great to learn from somebody who has training in like a narrative. Well, and I think too, like I think our biggest influence of this, the biggest influence of this comic was the first comic we did together. Right. And I think we really saw, like it was As an like expansion. The, yeah, like yeah. we sort of saw what was possible for us doing this together because it's kind of an experiment, like a big experiment. But you're like, oh, this is how these two things work together. This is how our two sort of storytelling styles work. And I think this one summer was kind of like, oh, we know that that's how it works now, so we can just kind of go and tell another story. And I sort of felt like the second time around, knowing what we could do last time was a huge influence on what I sort of Well, the medium for. still feels so open. Oh, yeah. Like, the medium feels like it is still being explored, mm -hmm. and the form is being explored yeah. and expanding out, which is um, really exciting to be a part of, because it feels like we're all just making discoveries together as a community. Totally. It does seem like a really tight community. It seems like yeah. where, where you're, like people are like really commending, that, I mean, they may be severely jealous at the same time, <laughs> right. but, but they're commending you for like doing that. They love it. And then like, right. I wish I thought of it first. It's a, it is such a tight community. And sometimes we laugh that, you know, it's like, uh, you know, there's not a lot to be jealous of in a way because it's, it's so unlucrative when you really break down <laughs> right. you know yeah, like time, you time yeah. for money it's like they're they're an incredibly liberal intensive yeah. <laughs> endeavor but um yeah i think that that comes from being sort of a niche fringe thing for a long time but it's something that i would really love to see continue partially um i, I think that it, it the dedication and sort of you need to have a weird quirk in your brain to actually be a cartoonist and stick through projects like that kind of weeds out people that don't really right. do it that badly. Yeah, probably. there's no there's no posers, you know, right. like you either do it or you, you don't. It's kind of a, I mean, I think too, like the way that, the way sort of the comic, like book festivals, right? Like it's kind of like this weird family reunion where you get to see people that you only get to see like in other cities other than where you live. And I feel like because comics is you sort of sitting at a convention for like two days behind a table with your comics, it's kind of like these prolonged, you know, it's like you actually feel like you kind of go through this like, you know, summer camp with all these people where you get to see them and spend all this time with them. Uh, yeah, so it really is this really cool. And especially for me, for the women in comics, like watching all these people who have kind of shown up when we showed up and watching how they've expanded yeah. is really inspiring. Yeah, it is inspiring and the, for me, the stories themselves, and you, you tackle some really serious subjects in these books, but you do it in a way that uh, that makes them deep and meaningful and interesting to look at. And um, it reminded me of summers that I had in ways, um, but I think it's a beautiful book, and I really appreciate you guys joining us, Jillian and Mariko Tamaki. Thank yeah. you so Thank much. Thank you so Thank much you. for having us. Yeah.